Ranking every series of Doctor Who. Well, I tell a fib, I'm just going to be doing New Who because there's too much old Who and I haven't finished watching it all yet. We previously ranked Doctors and Monsters, so this is the next one in the series. Starting from the worst and moving upwards, we have Series 6 with Matt Smith as the 11th Doctor, Rory and Amy as companions. Uh, I hate this series. This series made me not want to watch Doctor Who anymore. I can directly tie this series to being the point where I stopped enjoying watching Doctor Who with my family for a while. You know, it used to be something that we'd all gather around the television for, and this was the series where I was like, God, this is a little bit embarrassing, isn't it? Uh, obviously they're probably tied together with growing up, but these episodes are not up to snuff in my opinion. There's so many duds, there's, a, there's a, the odd one or two here, but god, stuff like A Good Man Goes to War is terrible. All the stuff with the river, Amy twists, nightmarishly annoying, it was too clever for its own good. And it did not stick the landing at all, I do not believe. Uh, a real mess all round. So that's going in the D tier. My only D tier, actually. Next would be the 60th anniversary specials. Now, I would normally keep the specials tied to the series that they immediately preceded or followed. However, these 60th anniversary ones are kind of a bit standalone, and they might as well be the really condensed series for the 14th Doctor. Now, I've complained many, many times about how these three episodes should just be one ongoing episode for three stories, but it's just divided so much between you know, a throwaway one in the middle, which is very good, but it's so irrelevant compared to the other two. It might as well just be taken at random points in a series that doesn't exist for the 14th Doctor. Um, I find it unpleasant and nostalgia, not just nostalgia driven, because all of Doctor Who is nostalgia driven, but entirely consumed in nostalgia to almost a point of suffocation. So I'll pop in that bottom of C tier. Next up is another Matt Smith season, it's season 7A, the last chunk of time we have the Pond family. It might not be fair because it's just a, such a short amount of episodes, but with the way the current series is starting to look, maybe that's the norm in, in the future of Doctor Who. But I just think this has got a lot of mid, a lot of mid, you know, it's got like one or two good episodes. I quite enjoy the, uh, I know it's, it's sacrilege just to say, I enjoyed Asylum of the Dalek. It makes very little sense if you think about it in context of other Dalek stories, but I think in, in on its own merits, I had a lot of fun with it. But no, it's just, it's just fine. I was sick of the ponds at this point, they had a bunch of random stuff like the divorce arc and then undoing their perfect leave and all the things with the weeping angels that I didn't enjoy. I just, just don't enjoy 7A, it's, it was never my cup of tea and I was glad to see the back of Amy and Rory by the end of it because it's, it's a shame because I really loved them at the start. Next up in C is our first entry from Jodie Whittaker, the 13th Doctor. It's her first series, series 11. Going back, I like some of these. I still don't like Rosa, I don't get the hype. But I was keen on the Demons of the Punjab on my second watch. I didn't actually like it the first time, but second time going through, I liked it. I like Demons of the Punjab and a little bit of The Woman Who Fell to Earth. Arachnids in the UK was a lot better the second time. And I think, you know, obviously at the time it was like, she is a brand new doctor. When you have a brand new doctor, you're very judgy about the kind of things they do. Uh, I, I've seen enough Doctor Who on the rewatches now. The Doctor does mental stuff like murdering innocent animals all the time. It just depends what day it is and what writer you've got. It's hard to sort of judge that the Doctor would never do this. Yeah, I'm sure the Doctor would suffocate a bunch of spiders. It's not ideal though. So yeah, Series 11 I just thought was a bit lacking. Very pretty, but uh, but lacking the, the riz that normal Doctor Who has. It was very clean despite being very... Uh, attempting to hit social commentary a lot harder and you know like Demons of the Punjab it works I didn't love the aliens being chill at the time but in hindsight I think it fits as part of the wider picture of Doctor Who a lot nicer than it did as a series that I had to wait a whole week to watch the episode for. Next up in C is series 7B not too far from series 7A but I think there was slightly more going on this series a new companion doesn't hurt especially after a bunch of years with the ponds but there's a lot of duds this series I quite like uh, Journey to the Center of the TARDIS if we're including the specials I love the Day of the Doctor but there's just awful stuff here I, I really can't I really can't get away from how terrible the Crimson Aura is I felt Nightmare in Silver was pretty rubbish. Uh, Cold War's boring. Like it's it's not ideal. It's not what you want for a new companion. But when we take in the specials, 
and the whole night of the Doctor and the day of the Doctor. I think it's a, it, it ends on a higher note than Seven's very short existence did. Flux is weird. It has so many ideas, so many half-baked elements, um, and the the acting is, is probably worse than Eleven and Twelve. But it looks so good visually, and it has a lot of yeah. I say it has a lot of ideas. You know, if you throw two thousand darts, some of them have to hit, and some of them do hit. And I like the characters of Claire and Jericho. I think Dan is an amazingly odd companion. It's odd how he gives so little and is so amusing and spends so little time with the Doctor. It's really hard to judge as a package. When I mean, you throw in the specials as well, like it's crazy how the Sea Devil's going from being one of the worst specials of all time. When I think Power of the Doctor was pretty fun and good, it's a it's a mixed bag. Probably worse than Twelve, but so much funnier. I think John Bishop gives both nothing and everything, and that makes this series an excellent addition to the universe of Who. Maybe. Not to be too mean to our girl Jodie, but we're going for season 12 at the bottom of B tier. Now, I think it's a step up in some ways, the series like, like Creatively, it's so bankrupt. It's so much looping round of similar Russell T emotions and, you know, Last of the Time Lords again, a big twist about her origin story. It's, it's a lot of well-trodden ground. But I think if you just look at it episode by episode, the episodes are either pretty exciting, you know, like uh, I found the Fugitive of the Jadoon very good. My brain tells me it's a two-parter, even though I know it's I know it's a single. Praxis, I liked Praxis. I don't get why people hate it so much. The Haunting of Via Deodota, and the finale is nowhere near as bad as some other finales that I've seen in better series. Orphan 55 is maybe one of the worst episodes of Doctor Who ever. However, it's one of the funniest episodes of Doctor Who ever in terms of how terrible it is. I can't pretend that I wouldn't rather watch Orphan 55 over any of the middle tier, over like a series six episode of Matt Smith, or any of sort of the sleepy episodes where it's nothing goes on. At least stuff is happening in Orphan 55. You gotta remember Benny, ah oh, Benny. The Lone Side Man was cool, the designs were popping, it still looks good like the series before. Uh, I just think, yes, yeah, it's, it's just a tighter package in terms of it feeling like Doctor Who, even though it feels like Doctor Who that we've eaten before. It's a hard one to choose, but I'm putting Season 1 here, the new series of Vinci Tagawa as the 15th Doctor. It's got a lot of good episodes, and I feel like it's probably got less duds than some other series, like Devil's Court I didn't like. I didn't love 73 Yards, but I get why people do. But the finale is so terrible that it kind of undoes a lot of the goodwill. If this series ended with a banger finale, then I think this could easily be one of the best series of Doctor Who of all time. However, building a mystery into all the episodes only works if people don't hate the answer. And we, you know, I say we, a lot of people didn't like the finale. The Empire of Death, specifically the Empire of Death, I think The Legend of Ruby Sunday is actually quite a very good episode. It, and it, most of the Empire of Death is okay until it starts actually answering the questions that we didn't like the answers to. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very pretty series, it's a very well made series, but I feel like it's a bit undercooked. It's like a, you eat a delicious piece of like raw cookie dough or something. But it was maybe a bit too raw, and the egg's given me a poorly tummy now. But it was very tasty whilst I ate it, I just don't like where it left me. So yeah, that's that one. Now next is painful for me to do personally, and it, I think it's series 9. Just looking at the overall number of episodes that I think are bangers per series, I think 9, mostly due to its decision to make every story a two-parter, well, apart from one. Some of those two-parters are bangers, and some of them are slow, and because they're all two-parters, that takes up two episodes in your very limited amount of stories with Clara and the Twelfth Doctor again. So, despite me thinking that maybe it has maybe one of the best finales of all Who, I think that some of the chaff in the middle slows down just a tiny bit in terms of my love of it as an overall package. But I will be doing after this video, my next video will be ranking every single individual episode. And oh boy, you're gonna see the series nine episodes doing very well when they hit, because when they hit, they go hard. Bottom of A now, I think 
Matt Smith's first series, Series 5, is a real strong A. It's got a lot of fine stories. I don't love The Hungry Earth. I don't love Vampires in Venice. Ah, Victory of the Daleks is what it is. But there's lots of really good stuff here. I think in a world that was very scared that the show would die when David Tennant left. Matt Smith came in as a breath of fresh air. The show had a whole fresh look. It looked good. It looked really good. And when you weren't so sure on the new Doctor, there was just enough stuff going on that you could always enjoy it. I don't love the finale, but I think it's better than a lot of the Matt Smith finales. And I think while Amy is a divisive character, I think she brought a lot of conflict to the TARDIS that we hadn't really seen in, on the same level at this point. Uh, Donna was the closest, but this was just an, another level above in terms of challenging the Doctor constantly. And that Christmas special is by far the best Christmas special in Doctor Who. Uh, yeah, Moffat on top. Next comes series 10, another Moffat. It is the last series of Capaldi, and as I said with series 9, if we were judging individual episodes, they might be right at the tippy top of the list. But I think as a package, it feels a little bit safe in some ways. It's kind of like a reboot at the start. But then they throw all of that out because you have to have an intimate knowledge of the master about halfway through. Which means it's not quite for new people, it's not quite just for the classic diehard fans, but that finale is so good I don't care. It's it's just a really good piece of television. I can't get enough of it, but I think it like I say, it doesn't really work out of context, which a lot of who doesn't, but as something that kind of felt like a reboot for a while, it was weird that it went that direction. Next one is really hard between Series 2 and Series 3 with uh, Big David himself. Now, I was going to put too much lower because it's quite sickly and sweet and this rails very much like Honeymoon Phase. And that's some real stinker episodes. But that finale is so good and there are some real banger adventures in here. While I don't love Series 2 as much as I used to, I know for a fact that for a lot of people, Girl in the Fireplace, School Reunion, are bangers, and a lot of people prefer this version of the Cybermen. I don't think the episodes are that great, but I do prefer this design. For a lot of people, I can just see this series having almost nothing but bangers. It's got some real stinkers, like the Idiot's Lantern and Fear Her. But then you go into Army of Ghosts after that, so can you really complain that long? There's only one bad one. And I love Love and Monsters. It's such a good episode. You know, the ones that I find more boring are the sort of standard episodes like New Earth and Tooth and Claw. When it gets weird, like the Seaton episode, Love and Monsters, Doomsday, it's just going crazy. And I don't think... Oh, it's hard. It's, they're getting so good at cliffhangers in Doctor Who for a while. But that cliffhanger where the Daleks emerged from the egg, you just didn't see it coming. I was like, this is a Cyberman episode. Well, I didn't see it coming because I didn't get spoiled. But... That blew my mind as a child, and it's so cool to see the Cybermen and the Daleks come face to face. Next would be Series 3. Similar, not to Knock Rose, I just think Master's a lot more interesting. I just think there's some real good chemistry here between the actors. Not like a romantic chemistry, but I think the, the characters get on really interestingly. The adventures, I think, are a lot tighter. The mysteries are more interesting, and I think despite a few odd ducks that don't work out, no series of Doctor Who doesn't have some mid-episodes, it does have a real stand-up second half, where you go from human nature into family of blood into blink, utopia, sound of drums, very, very good stuff all round. Well, they're not quite as good as the series I want next. Series 1, Eccleston's only series as the Doctor with Rose, who I think is a lot better in this series than she was in Series 2. She's got more grit to her, more interesting stuff going on in her life. I just think this is maybe one of the most perfect series of Doctor Who for any new person to the franchise, which is, you know, obvious because it's Series 1, but, you know, Season 1 couldn't quite deliver on the same accessibility side in terms of uh, explaining the concepts of everything in a slow and reasonable manner. The threat is real and palpable, it feels like Rose could die at any episode because you don't 100% trust this doctor yet because she doesn't. This is one of the most realistic worlds that they've developed, there's a supporting cast at home, there's news, there's military, there's prime ministers, politicians that get involved on a regular basis. Not so much that it derails the show but in a sort of realistic level, that, you know, yeah that probably is what would happen if the doctor rocked her out. Outside how boring I find The Unquiet Dead, I don't think there's any episodes I'd skip when I watch this series. 
I think it's the asking questions that I would want to be asked of Doctor Who that Doctor Who doesn't even bother to ask anymore. You get what if aliens were made public to everybody in the Slitheen invasion. You get to see what kind of reaction the world would have. And it's not something that gets covered all the time in Doctor Who, especially not the limited old Who that I have seen. You get to look at what if the companion was selfish. So many companions in old Who are sort of passive, just there to pass in the spanner. Rose tries to save her dad. She has a tangible thing that time travel would really grip her. You know, when he says it's a spaceship, she's not so keen, but when she finds out it's a time machine too, she's on it because she wants to save her dad. It's a master plan. Even questions that you wouldn't expect to get covered in the series' first series get done. You get to think, oh, well, Rose is great because the Doctor's shaped her and she's really brilliant and bright. But what if we had a bad companion? And then you get Adam, who's just rubbish. He doesn't do what he's told, he steals stuff, he's got no vision, he only cares about making a profit, he doesn't care about seeing the universe, he cares about what the universe can do for him. You get to ask, well Doctor Who's so British, fundamentally so, what if he was American? You get Captain Jack, Captain Jack is exactly what I'd picture if the CW won the contract and we're going to be making Doctor Who US, like the one in Community, where it Inspector Space Time US, that's Captain Jack so many important interesting topics covered in a single series if only the kind of writing that went into this series was consistent throughout all of Doctor Who we would definitively have the best show ever no one would ever be able to pull us up on our laurels and whip out a fear her and judge us and laugh next is series four with David Tennant now the opposite while I think series one is the perfect place to begin Doctor Who Series 4 is like a real strong finale to the Russell T era. It's why I think the specials were so unnecessary. The way that the specials come in, you'd think that the show ended on a, an open cliffhanger. This is such a definitive end. It's probably the most definitive end that we've had outside of Capaldi. Why? Well, anyway, enough of moaning about the specials. Series 4 is amazing. It's got so many good episodes, one after the other. Partners in Crime, funny, good. Fires of Pompeii, very good. Planet of the Ude, very good. Sometimes Stratagems, fine. Doctor's Daughter, I have fun with, I get why people don't like it. Unicorn on the Wharf, but I don't love. Silence in the Library, Forest of the Dead, very good. Midnight, amazing. Followed by Turn Left, amazing. Followed by The Stolen Earths, amazing. Banger after banger. It's just, so, what a good run. From the library into Midnight into Turn Left into the finale. Insanely high quality. I remember watching that week to week. It felt like this was never going to be topped. And in some ways it kind of wasn't. The regeneration finale is a bit mid, but you know, it's, a, it's a, just a very classic Russell writing of button pressing to save the universe, but Wolf carries those, so that's fine. Yeah, just insanely solid series. If you're a Rose fan, a Martha fan, or just like Torchwood watching Sarah Jane Adventures, they're all just, everything gets a payoff here. It's the definitive way to do a final series when you're on the top. It's no surprise that people thought that the show should end with Tenet because this felt like the end game of Doctor Who. Now, my my two versions of my S tier series, and I like these all about the same, they're all for different reasons. Now my third pick, which is series eight, is for another very different reason too. And it's my favorite of these three, but I can see why anyone would like any of these and I'd love all of these about equally. One is the perfect starting point. Four was perfect television. Week to week bangers. Suspense. Intrigue. Now, A, I find, is sort of the Doctor Who for the streaming generation. I did not enjoy this series week to week because I did not see that Moffat was cooking. And you would, you know, say you've got to trust him. I've just come off series six and seven, so I had no reason to trust him at this point that he could always cook. I think this series is perfect in hindsight because when you know what it's building to, you get it. You're like, why are they bringing in this curmudgeonly Danny Pink? You know, he's taking away some of the fun from Clara and Twelve. And the answer is, Clara and Twelve were having too much fun. Why is the Doctor so stern? Because he needs to be, because Clara's bringing out the worst in him in, in so many ways. It's so good. You know, there's some real stinkers, but even the stinkers have good scenes. That's the thing. So many of the fine episodes have some of the best scenes in Doctor Who. Kill the Moon is an awful episode, but that argument that Clara and Twelve have at the end, I'd take that a million times over, so I'm glad it existed. The finale is brilliant, 
a great new master, finally a master who feels like a threat. She's going around murdering everybody. It's a great. You know, John Sim talked a big game, but he stayed in his battleship for an entire year. The discussion between Twelve and Clara about how she let him down in the episode Dark Water. Or even just the scene before where she just can't comprehend how something so normal could kill someone. She's so desensitised. It's asking questions of Doctor Who and companion relationships that they've touched on before but they've never committed to the bit. They've never committed to a bit of an entire series about a toxic uh, Doctor companion relationship. They do it for an episode or two. Even when, like, you know, Amy and Eleven could have gone the same way if we didn't go and collect Rory. But it's just interesting. And I want to be intrigued by Doctor Who. As much as I want to be excited, this series doesn't have the big excitement highs of 4. But it makes me think about it a hell of a lot more than 4 does. 4 is like I'm on a roller coaster, a banger roller coaster. But this one makes me think, and that's why it's my favourite. But, you know, I could easily see this being slightly below 4 or, or Series 1 just because of the other reasons I gave for them being so good. So that's just a real whip through of my Doctor Who series rankings. Um, and if you don't agree, let me know in the comments below, but I'm sorry, these are just it, the definitive, and there's no room to be debated. Obviously, I'm joking. Everyone has their own tastes, and mine I wear on my sleeve, sadly. I cannot hide my love of terrible, terrible, toxic ships in Doctor Who, like Clara and <laughs> But um, it's it's good stuff, and I love seeing other people's opinions, and I can't wait for people to tell me how wrong I am, and how uh, something is brilliant, or how I've not been harsh enough on Jodie. Those series are better on the rewatch. Uh, Trust Doctor Who fan ninety one. I went back and rewatched those series, and I hated them a hell of a lot less. It's that whole thing of these are a hell of a lot better when you don't have some guy in your ear telling you how terrible they are. Although I did watch them. Uh, blind the first time without any social media influence and I was still a grump about them myself. If you like Doctor Who but want to have something physical to show outside of the 700th Sonic Screwdriver, why don't you grab yourself a Magic the Gathering card with your favourite Doctor Who characters on. I have been posting on Whatnot a lot in the last year. I've been doing loads of streams, selling loads of cards, and I'm happy to tell you that we have so many Doctor Who Magic the Gathering cards listed on our shop right now. If you follow the link in the bio and go to my Whatnot page at jameson101, then you can find all sorts of Doctor Who cards that you want to buy. Danny Pink and redeem his love. He's a very, very overpowered card. Or just want a themed growth spiral with the TARDIS on. There's something here for Doctor Who fans, Magic the Gathering fans, and competitive players. There's loads of banger cards here. Maybe you need that command tower to be the TARDIS console. You can put that in every deck. That's just fun. If you sign up for one for the first time, then you get £10 of free credit to spend. So you can just grab a whole bunch of these, you know? Or you don't have to spend them on me. You can go to anyone else's streams or anyone else's shops and you can just grab stuff there too. All you have to do is sign up using the link below, or the link that's on the screen right now if you're watching the video. Whenever I do stream, we give away stuff for free too, so you can just tune into any stream and ask me questions live about Doctor Who, or Magic, or Yu-Gi-Oh, or anything, and I will answer them and give away cards for free, and packs, and sometimes even more. So yeah, keep an eye on the WhatNot family. Other than that, let me know in the comments below how much did I get wrong? What series is the real undisputed champion that I said was a C-tier mess? I hope you all have a lovely week. Like, subscribe and follow and do the things on this video.